Now, Martin Finn is 22 years of age. He lives in Atherton, near Wigan, in the north of England. Martin is autistic and more or less non-verbal, but when he stands in front of a microphone, this is what happens. And uh, that was Martin Finn singing Yellow by Coldplay. And Martin's parents, John and Norma, join me now from Wigan. Good morning to you both. Good morning, John. And, uh, John, you come from good County Clare stock. I do, yeah. <laughs> Liston Vanna. And uh, how long have you been in England? I came to Manchester in the early 70s. Um, so I've been practically there since. There ever since. I will go back to Ireland quite a bit, like, so. The connection is still very strong. Yes. And uh, you, Norma, too, have uh, Irish connections, I believe. Uh, well, I have, yeah, uh, a, a little bit way back. Uh, but originally I'm from Stockport. I see. And yeah. uh, listening to Martin there, uh, can you describe him to me, John, what, what his behaviour might be like if I was to meet you in your home? Well, to describe Martin, really, um, he's 22 years old. He's, he's like a toddler, really. He needs a 24-year-old care. Um, he's practically non-verbal. He's got some words, but he, he, he can't put any meaning to, to a sentence. So we would just kind of use um, short phrases. Uh, something started, something finished. And um, music, he, he lives for music, really. Music is his life, so, so he learns uh, the songs. He, he will listen to the CDs, and that's his way of learning. And as we heard there a minute ago, he's a, he's a fine singer. And uh, Norma, tell us, when was Martin first diagnosed with autism? Uh, well, when he was about uh, three years old, yes, about that time. And what's, um, what symptoms had he? Well, he started walking on his toes and he wasn't talking properly. Um, and he had a lot of um, ear infections and we, we kind of thought that was due to his, him not talking but um, that's really what it was, the autism. You eventually found out that was the diagnosis. Yes, yes. And yes. at that stage, did you know much about autism? We didn't really know anything much about it. Um, we'd heard about it, but we didn't really realise what it was all about. And, and John, tell me then, when it came to schooling uh, for Martin, what did you have to do? Well, yeah, Martin, he went to, to a special needs school until he was 14. Uh, and then at 14, they did an artistic school. We managed to get him in there, to just a new school that opened. And he made a lot of progress in, in a matter of a couple of years. When the, the teachers were fantastic, you know, and they come to the home and they invited us to the school and to show us the methods that were using of teaching. You know, because I think that a lot of talking wasn't wasn't the way, because Martin didn't understand what we were talking about. It, things become a lot more easier at home, and Martin was a lot more easier to manage, really. Uh, and tell us, John, what what uh, were the teachers in this uh, special school doing differently uh, to people that Martin was with before? Well, they would work more or less one to one, and uh, in cubicles uh, they would work say five to ten minutes and then they would move on and they would be kind of doing something all day but short lengths of time and when it would come to play time they would maybe just let a couple of them out so there wouldn't a lot of noise out and, and Martin would be able to cope with that much easier than letting a whole, all the, the class out at once and they would use pictures and pecs and stuff that we didn't really know anything about like they would say Instead of a long sentence, uh, something was uh, started, something finished, and Martin would be able to understand it much easier. So uh, yeah, they, they, I, they, you know, they really helped us, uh, fantastic, because they come to the home and explain to us, how, you know, um, how to do things at home, and things became much easier, as I say. Mm, and I'm just wondering, uh, then, Norma, when, when did he show signs that uh, music was a big interest and? was going to be, for him, an outlet. Mm. Well, 
since he was very small, um, he, he just loved music. He, you know, even as a baby, he'd be rocking, rocking to this, to the rhythm of whatever music we had on. Um, and and of course, he, he was just always singing little bits of things. Um, uh, and then, of course, when he got to school, started school, he seemed to be singing all the time. Um, so we we knew like really that he did he did love you know he did love singing and he loved his music and and tell us uh, about the the time the first time you saw him performing norma well when he was at the artistic school um uh, his teacher took him to um to one of the lady teachers got married and he asked us if he could take him to the wedding and of course he he um he took him to the wedding and everybody loved him singing at the wedding so a little bit after they they took him to the they arranged for him to go to the recording studio and he made a cd for charity for the school from then on uh, he was asked to perform at a few charity balls and uh, you know different places and can you remember the um, song he sang at the wedding norma we we wasn't at the wedding but i think he sang um, i think he sang this yellow and, and different ones and a few different ones and you're beautiful and, and no nerves or shyness about getting up and performing in front of a big crowd? No, no, it doesn't seem to bother him. So long as everything's organised um, and you write him out a timeline at what time he's doing it and what he's singing, um, you know, he, he seems fine. So long as everything's working OK, he's, um, he's fine. And, and when you heard the CD and him singing, I think, ten songs on it, uh, yeah. how did you feel? Well, very, very proud of him, yeah. Very proud. Yeah, and just to explain, Sorry. because you, you mentioned routine there, uh, John, mm. um, it, it is the case then uh, that Martin, if he was in the car or if he was at home, there would be no question of ending a song be- before it was finished. In other words, you had to be really careful about his interaction with music. Uh, that's correct, yeah. If, if we were in the car and there was a, a song playing in the radio and we didn't switch the, the, the radio off until that song was finished... Because Martin, you know, he he has so much respect for the for the music for that particular song. Uh, he wouldn't, you know, we so we kind of we know all these little things, and it's same if if the television, if there was something on, and he's watching something, you know, we, we would never switch it over. He, Martin kind of does his own thing at his own pace, and he would play his CDs, videos, um, DVDs, whatever. And, and that's his life, really. That you know, he just lives for the music. Yeah, and you also go on holidays to Benidorm, and uh, he performs there, Norma. He does, yes. Well, we've gone to the same place for quite a few years now, and we go into this uh, this little place up the road, uh, and there's a lady who plays an accordion, and we know her quite well now. And of course, when we go in, um, he wanted. He, she asked if he could sing. And uh, he took the microphone and um, he started to sing Granada in Spanish and she played the accordion for That's him. That's extraordinary. So it was quite nice, yeah. That's extraordinary, though, to be able to do we were that. Very, we were very shocked because we didn't realise ourselves that he could do that. That, that. that he could sing in Spanish. That's right, yeah. and, and how many times, I'm just wondering then, he obviously had to listen to a song for a number of times before he mm. grasped it. So how many, how many times would he have to listen to a song before he could well, get up and perform? Well, that particular one, no, he's got a, a CD of it at home and um, he, he did play it quite a lot. I'd say quite a, a number of times, really. But, um, but then without any, any mistakes or fault, he can stand up there and sing it. Yeah, yeah, he and, did do, yeah. And does he have a preference for any particular type of music, John? Well, yeah, he loves um, country music, Irish country music or American, or pop music. He like quite, He's quite of a, a choice, really. He, he struggles with um, classical or opera. I think it's not a question that he, he doesn't like it. it. There's something in there that, um, that he can't... He would put his hands to his ears, um, like I say, choirs, that type, whether it's just a lot of mu- music, a lot of musicians or a lot of singers together. Uh, so we would have to take him out if if something like that come on and we were in the supermarket. Even if it was very low, he would put his hands to his ears and we would have to take him out. He'd be very distressed. He would, yes, he would. So you have to be very careful where you go then. Well, yeah, I mean, we kind of 
well, like I say, if if something like that did come on, you would, we would be, we would know about him. We would take him out. So you know, that's that's the only way we can overcome that kind of. You thing. know, the, you know the trigger points. In other words, yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. are there others than the things you have to avoid, John, to ensure that uh, Martin can get through the day without upset? Well, I I suppose there is lots of little things, but you, you know, generally we. We take him to our local clubs. Uh, there's quite a, a few clubs, and where Martin will you help and sing? But there's a lot of, we'd say, middle-aged uh, to older people, which is 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 probably better than if he was taken to a, a, where there'd be a lot of younger ones, and they wouldn't maybe understand about artistic people. So you know, we we kind of select the places we and we take Martin, I suppose, which you know he's more comfortable. Yeah, and I'm just uh, struck also by the fact that uh, when he listens to live recordings that feature on a CD and when we say one of the singers uh, on that CD breaks to talk to the crowd, whatever interaction there is, uh, Martin will do that too. That's correct, yeah. I mean, if he listens to, um, if he learns a song from, from a DVD rather than a CD and whether it's it's been sang maybe to to a live audience and there's a bit of talking in there, Martin will put that in as well. He he associates that that's part of the of the song, I suppose. Really, you know. So word for word, he will repeat it. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And, and yeah, just given this this astonishing um, the talent he has for music and uh, being able to learn how to sing and you know following, we say a live artist and speaking to a crowd. Have experts in autism been able to explain it to you exactly what's going on, Norma? Not really, no. Um, all, all his teacher used to say, he said, everything he's doing, he's learning for himself. Uh, he said, we can't take any credit for it because everything he's doing, he's just doing it on his own. You know, so um, nobody's was, really explained that to sure, us. And I should point out also, he would sit down and read the sleeve notes on CDs. That's right, yeah. He, he would look at, take the sleeves out of the CDs and the DVDs and he would read where they're recorded and where whoever is involved in producing them and mastering them and the rest of it. So he would memorise all that. So when sometimes we go to Ireland in different parts, we can be driving past the recording studio and all of a sudden Martin is pointing because he can remember some of the CDs that he has at home have oh. been recorded in that recording studio. So he you know, so the music helps him to... It, there's something in the music that he can read that particular stuff. But if you were to write down something that was happening on a daily basis, whether or something was going to happen, that would have no meaning, so Martin would just ignore that. Mm. But, but, but you're if saying... we write down that there's music and bands and different stuff coming on in our local clubs, then obviously he will remember that and he can read that. So he's an extraordinary knowledge of music and, and where it is recorded. So what you're saying is you're driving along the motorway in Ireland, you're heading back to County Clare, and uh, you come to a certain sign and Martin will be able to tell you uh, in some way that there's a recording studio here um, the the artist who has he has listened to on a CD. Have you, have, have you had to visit many recording studios then as a result? <laughs> Actually, yeah. I mean, we would go in, into some towns and, and villages and if, if Martin is pointing, we would, uh, we would, I would knock and just say, we've got this young artistic man with us. Is it, is it OK if he comes in and has a look around? They say, oh, yeah, definitely. So we bring Martin in, he looks around and he sees all the equipment and he's quite happy there. If he sees any books to do with music, he'll have a look. And it's, it's quite nice, really. You know, most people are, are yeah. very helpful and, and they understand, you know. I'm sure. And, and can you tell us a, 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 about the recording studios you've visited uh, thus far? How many, how many have you been to? Well, we've been around around the Midlands, around Athlone and, and Moat, and there's been a few around that area. There's, there's quite a few there, like. So you've, you've, you've called into them and, and they have yeah. uh, tre treated Martin well. Um, they have, yes. And he's happy, obviously. This, this makes oh, him happy. Oh, yeah, he's happy, yeah. Uh, what, what's, what's life uh, for Martin like now? Is, is he still in, in full-time education, John? Um, well, no, he's, he's finished, uh, like college at 19 he goes to a day center which is run by the national artistic society but i think we we fill them in and more or less on a daily basis a communi communication book of the, the likes and dislikes of martin it helps i suppose to if there's anybody new comes on the scene that 
Martin may, would find it maybe hard to, to cope with if they've new service users or new staff that comes on. So if we kind of work together as a team, um, it, we tend to, you know, it works better than, than just, just doing something and us not really knowing what's happening. And I'm just yeah. wondering about the future now um, for, for Martin. Uh, do, you worry, do you worry about what the future holds? Well, we do really. That's a, a big concern because obviously we would like to plan Martin's future, you know, that something... That's, we hope, like, with, with the music, that... There's a lot of, 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 of good people and, uh, you know, they have come on the scene recently. Um, there's a, a guy called Johnny Parker that's worked with, uh, in the music industry for a number of years and he's been very helpful. So there's quite a good few people that's come on. So we just hope that, uh, you know, something with his music, seeing he, he loves his music and he loves his singing, that something could be put in place that, that he could benefit from in the future, maybe when we're not around. Yeah, because Norma, every weekend you're visiting uh, clubs and dance halls uh, with Martin, so mm-hmm. that is so much an important part of his routine. Oh, it is, yes. And we do worry, really, that when we're not here, is who's going to take him to these places that he loves so much? Yeah. Um, we, we really worry about that. Sure. And he has a sister, uh, Marie. Uh, she, t- yeah. So she helps, no doubt. Oh, she, she's very good. Yeah, she's very, very good to him. Um, but she has a little boy uh, of her own, so, it, you know, she's quite busy with her little lad, so... And it, it must be... I'm not, I'm not saying it's stressful for you both, but it, it must be tough. It must be tough day-to-day, uh, as much as you love Martin, uh, to deal mm. with all his little habits and all the things you have to do to ensure he hasn't any distress in his day. Yeah, it is hard, yeah. It, it can be stressful, yes, it, you know... Um, but the thing is, you ha- you just have to keep going and and help him as much as we can, really. And John, you you similarly, do you find the going tough at times? Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's you have to be. You, uh, this probably sounds a bit silly, but we can't afford to get ill because Martin, everything's routine. He has to be taken out every night in the car for a run. Apart, you know, apart from the nights that he goes to the clubs and that. Because everything is, is kind of routine. So, if for instance we were ill one weekend and we couldn't go to the club and Martin knows there's a band on and that he's supposed to perform, that would cause serious problems at home. So, we kind of, it sounds silly, but we, we can't afford to get ill because there's nothing else in place, that, there's nobody else put in place that would take Martin. And these are the things we're asking and talking about. You know, somebody, a bit of additional support and that if we were ill, that Martin, you know, things wouldn't just, everything wouldn't fall apart. Sure. So because some... his singing and his music is, is, is it... plays a big part for Martin. But obviously there's a lot of other areas in there. I mean, if, for instance, if we had a power cut and Martin, the power, you know, the telly and the, the CD player and his music shuts down, that has a serious knock-on effect. You know that can cause a lot of anxiety, and the anxiety can it can go into aggression. I mean, not it's not Martin's fault, and it's not our fault, but these are things that happen in life. Sure. With that bit of additional support, and maybe to be able to overcome things, and these are the things we worry about. And is he on medication, John? He's not on a lot of medication. He's on, on just um, probably a small amount, but. It does help just to keep the anxiety, keep things at, at, at bay, really, you know. The thing is, really, when we do ask about a bit of additional support, we hear a lot about increasing his medication. It's much easier to, to, to give a, get a prescription for medication than it is to provide a bit of additional support. Sure. You know, medication is OK to a certain degree, but... I don't think it's the answer to Martin's problem, a whole lot of medication, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So uh, have you got any reassurance then, um, Norma, that, you know, if you were to take ill, uh, that there would be support in place to ensure that Martin can continue to live the life he is at the moment? No, nothing at all. We've, we've, no, um, we, we've no support, really. Not, not from what, at the moment. You know, we've spoke to social services and... And um, they they just say, oh, well, if you were ill, 
uh, he'll have to stay at respite. But there's, you know, it's just, um, it's not proper support, really. Mm. But, no, uh, I wouldn't say now there's any support at all for us. So you're keeping your, your, your fingers crossed and probably praying that you, you both stay fit and well uh, for many yes. years to come. And, <laughs> and on, on a more positive note, uh, Norma and John, uh, you must be so proud when you see Martin getting up and singing in front of a big crowd. Yes, we are very, very proud of him. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, I like I would say in lots of cases, Martin is one in a million. Because you, you have to you'd have to meet Martin and see him and and to realise, you know, that, that how severe his his autism is and his ability, I suppose, and his disability. There's such a margin between. Well, it's been great to talk to you, uh, John and Norma Finn, in Wigan in the north of England. And best of luck to you both. I hope you stay well and healthy so that you can continue to do all you're doing for your son, Martin. And we're going to end now uh, with a song that he recorded. Uh, This is Martin singing You're Beautiful by James Blunt. Uh, John and Norma Finn, thanks a million. Thank Thank you you for having us. Thank Thank you. you. My life is brilliant. My life is pure. Off I'm sure She smiled on the subway She was with another man But I wouldn't turn Sleep on her Cause I 